Hello world, welcome back to Razer RC. So uh, I thought I'd shoot a video talking about the Traxxas Slash 4x4. A lot of people have been asking me to make a video about how to set up your RC car for racing. And so um, I'm kind of doing that, but uh, in particular for the Traxxas Slash 4x4, a lot of you may have seen my uh, race build series for the Traxxas Slash two wheel drive. I did that about two years ago, basically a 13 step process to bring it from a stock spec slash up to a race spec slash. And uh, a lot of you probably don't know that I actually uh, did a similar thing for my Slash 4x4. So um, I used to race a Slash 4x4 like years ago, probably about five years ago now. And uh, I'm also pretty active in the Traxxas forums and I actually put together a thread called how to tune your slash 4x4 for racing on the track. So um, this was uh, pretty much like my magnum opus for the Traxxas forums. Uh, I put together a thread talking about uh, basically like a like eight or ten step process on how to build up a slash 4x4 for racing. Um, and it includes a lot of information about the slash 4x4, uh, what the different adjustments make and all that kind of stuff. So I thought I'd go through it since all that information is available. I'll put a link down uh, in my description. Uh, but yeah, this is me, Razer RC22. As you can see, there I am logged in. And so I just kind of walk through uh, what I recommend um, to build up your slash 4x4 for racing. So the way I designed this was kind of like a programmed instruction type method uh, it's basically goes like 1 to 10 um, kind of starting from the beginning what I think is kind of the most important thing and then uh, moving forward so it's kind of designed so that you could do what steps one two three and then you know kind of work on the other stuff later it kind of builds on itself as you go through it uh, step by step and you know even if you don't understand some of the later stuff or don't have time or you know don't get to that you can still make improvements from the beginning and so uh, there's a lot of information here but um, I just kind of thought I would walk through it real quick so step one is basically just get your truck in order obviously there's a lot of things that people are not maintaining correctly on their vehicle and not checking correctly you know just check your bearings set the endpoints on your steering uh, if anything is bent or um, not moving freely that's actually going to cause a lot of problems later because you'll be trying to tune out you know why am i spinning out at the end of the the front straight or you know why my shocks not working correctly so a lot of things you just really need to make sure that you know just obviously maintenance wise get your truck in order make sure everything is working nice and smoothly and freely uh, disconnect your servo make sure the bulk cranks are moving freely by themselves even when they're not attached disconnect your shocks make sure your arms are moving up and down freely uh, even when they're not connected so anyways just fix all that stuff now that's kind of obvious uh, second thing is whatever parts you want to put on put on now um, if you got a special, you know, chassis that you want to put on, um, I recommend the LCG chassis. Actually, the uh, Slash 4x4 Platinum is really the, the Slash 4x4 to get. Um, it's really the only RC car that tracks is designed specifically for racing. Uh, you know, it comes with an unpainted body so you can put on your race scheme. It does not come with a radio so you can get a, race, a true race grade radio and use that. Um, it comes with the center diff, which is something that you'll want, um, different tunable rear hubs. So that's really the the only vehicle that tracks is designed for racing. Now, Slash 4 4 obviously is, you know, not the latest and greatest race kit out there. There's stuff like the Techno SCT 410 and the Low C 10 SCTE line. Those are obviously better than the Slash, but I would argue that the Slash 4 4 is actually the most... Uh, competitive vehicle in Traxxas's lineup. Um, certainly far better than the Bandit or Rustler, even better than the Slash two wheel drive. So it's also one of the, still one of the most uh, popular RC cars out there. So uh, yeah, definitely something um, a lot of people out there have. You know, uh, definitely an entry level uh, race vehicle, kind of a gateway vehicle that a lot of people use into racing. That's what I used as well. So um, anyways, uh, you know, it's still a decent vehicle. But anything that you want to put on, uh, put on now. If you've got special like Pro Track arms you want to do, put that on now. Because once you kind of get started, uh, you don't really want to be making massive changes like a different chassis or you know moving weight around or whatever. So anyways, uh, basic stuff, but uh, definitely makes sense to do that now. Uh, step three is to kind of go through the basics. Toe, camber, right height. Um, so toe is basically the front end. 
getting your uh, front wheels, you, you generally want to start with them just straight forward and back, zero toe is what they call that. Um, you can do a little bit of toe out, but that's usually kind of a band-aid solution in my opinion. Uh, it, it's always a little bit easier to tune uh, when you have your front wheels just straight, so zero toe out. Uh, camber is also very common uh, adjustments you want to do and get right early on so negative one degrees is kind of the industry standard what you want to start with you know you could do a little bit more a little bit less but um, if you're not really that familiar with camber I would just set negative one degrees all the way around all four corners uh, you will need a camber gauge to do that um, it's hard to eyeball it uh, but yeah negative one degrees is where you want to go right height is another uh, basically number that you want to be tracking. Um, the LCD chassis on a Traxxas slash 4x4, normally you'll get about 27, 28 millimeters of right height uh, with your arms level. Um, that will depend a little bit on what race tires you're using. So obviously, you know, bigger tires are going to have more right height, smaller tires are going to have less right height. But the LCG chassis is very, very low to the ground actually, a little bit lower than most vehicles, honestly. So uh, they went a little crazy with how low that chassis is. But, um, you know, another another uh, short course truck might be close to like 29, 30 millimeters. But for the LCD chassis, which I definitely recommend getting, it's a much better chassis than the high center gravity chassis. You'll want about 27, 28 millimeters. Or uh, another way to do it is just check that your arms are level front and rear. That would be about 27, 28. Um, last thing is the rear toe-in. So there are a few different camber block, or I'm sorry, uh, rear hubs that come with the Traxxas Slash. So the stock black plastic ones have two and a half degrees of rear toe-in. So um, they also make optional aluminum ones. And the aluminum ones are um, basically uh, one and a half degrees extra of uh, either extra toe-in or less toe-in depending on how you flip them so you can either have them pointed in and you'll get four degrees of toe-in or you can basically reverse them put the right on the left left on the right and you'll actually subtract one and a half degrees or you'll end up with one degree of toe-in so i actually recommend using the black plastic ones i know the platinum comes with the aluminum ones but really the black plastic ones are the one you want to use to make sure you got two and a half degrees four is way too much and one really is not enough, so uh, the black plastic ones will get you the rear tone that you uh, want to have. So, yeah, definitely go with that. So, number four is tires. You know, if you've gotten to this point, really uh, making sure you have the right tires is, is critical. It doesn't really matter how good your, the rest of your setup is if you have the wrong tires. Um, tires are going to be very specific to your local track, depending on if you're indoor clay, astroturf. Uh, loose loamy outdoor dirt um, the easiest way to figure out the tires is to just find what the fastest guy at your local track is doing even if it's a buggy or something you could use a similar type tire uh, just use whatever they're using and then and the second thing that's important to realize is that um, tires require uh, uh, a lot of preparation so it's not just enough to buy the right tire that everyone else is buying you gotta make sure the compound is correct uh, usually there's some kind of tire preparation either they're using different foams or they're adjusting their foams by punching holes in them or trimming down the foams or using open cell foams whatever there, there's a lot that goes into tire tuning I'm not going to cover here but uh, the main thing is get the right type of tires get the right compound you know asking if they're using any special tire sauce or whatever um, that'll make a big difference as well Breaking in the tires makes a big difference. So let's say your local uh, track, Proline Electrons are the most common tire. Uh, you'll need to scrub them in. You'll need to make sure they're uh, sauced correctly, prepared correctly. Just buying them brand new out of the pack, mounting them up, um, is not going to give you the same results as if you actually uh, go through that initial break-in process. So there are a lot of views out there um, from different uh, pro drivers and stuff. Um, check those out on YouTube, etc. Uh, but tires is actually the most important thing you can do. I mean, actually more important than pretty much any other thing uh, you can prepare on your vehicle. So uh, I go through some other little things that are not important. But uh, next big one is shocks. Everyone loves shocks and probably the most common upgrade people make even before tires, but tires are actually more important. Um, and I talk about the different shocks out there. Uh, the Platinum comes with GTR shocks. Um, there's also Ultra Shocks, Big Bore Shocks. Don't really recommend those. There are also other brands you could pick up, like TLR uh, makes pretty good shocks. I like those a lot. Um, but the most common shocks that you'll, you know, most people are going to get are GTR shocks. So I spent some time explaining that. Um, really, the 
there's kind of one fundamental flaw with the Traxxas Slash 4x4, and that's that it reuses the same exact shocks from all their two-wheel drive vehicles. You know, stuff that they put on the Bandit, like a two-wheel drive buggy, they also use on the Traxxas Slash. And the front shocks are actually way too short. There's not enough what's called droop, which is how far the front wheels hang down from the chassis when it's up in the air. So not enough droop, you don't get enough suspension travel, not enough shock travel, uh, doesn't land very well. Um, tends to chassis slop a lot in the front. So uh, the modification I recommend is actually getting a rear shock tower for your slash 4x4 and putting it on the front of the vehicle and you'll have to kind of mount it like backwards. And then also getting another set of rear GTR shocks and putting those in the front. So that'll get you the same shocks, all four corners will get you enough droop, all four corners. Um, you'll have to kind of lay down the front shocks there in the front to get the right shock angle, but uh, this will make a huge difference on how well the vehicle drives. Um, you'll find it jumps and lands way, way better, much more plush. Um, and then the springs I recommend are the original 10 SCTE uh, springs. So I think these came on their 1.0. They're still available at the time of this video. Hopefully they, they will be going forward, but um, yeah, those are really the right springs that will fit uh, your tracks to slash GTR shocks. Uh, I was running black front I'm sorry, what I ran was basically uh, the front springs from the 10 SCT, but I ran them on all four corners. The rear 10 SCT uh, springs are too long for the rear unless you, your trick's like crazy heavy. But uh, if you run the front, you can buy a pack of the front springs and I ran the black front springs on the front and the blue front springs on the rear. Um, if you're on lower traction, you can go down one spring rate, run blue up front, green in the rear. But uh, higher traction surfaces, you definitely want to run the black blue. Uh, the other thing I did was actually I ran different uh, spring uh, pistons in the rear. So I actually ran front spring pistons in the rear of the vehicle. They're, they use smaller holes um, and that allows you uh, basically to get a little more pack. And with those shock pistons, basically, uh, you know, I think there were 1.5s front and rear. Uh, I was running 30 weight associated oil. Different brands have slightly different uh, viscosity. So 30 weight associated oil is uh, kind of similar to like 32 and a half weight TLR oil. Um, but anyways, no big deal. Uh, that's what I was running shock package wise. So yeah, I tell you where to mount the shocks. I show a little uh, shock, I'm sorry, drop test. So you wanna you know drop this vehicle from the top, maybe record it in slow-mo, and you can kind of see it. You don't really want to bottom out. You just kind of want it to pack, uh, not chassis slap, and then, uh, you know, kind of land nice like that. So yeah, that's pretty much uh, the shocks. And so I kind of took a little break for a while. Um, didn't get a whole lot of response on this thread initially, so people were running some stuff. Um, and so what I kind of did was actually post a setup sheet. So this is from like three years ago, over three years now. Uh, but it was the actual setup I was running on my slash four before it shows you the shock locations camber link locations uh, Toe in camber all that good stuff um, Things to note like I mentioned I was running the black front springs from the 10 SCT at front and the blue front springs from the 10 SCT in the rear Here's a shock oils are running and then the 1.5 millimeter piston So the, the fronts come with 1.5, but I ran them um, on all four corners and then the you know different tires it doesn't really matter there. Uh, I was running the stock Valenian center diff. I was running 100k uh, front and rear 20k 10k. Uh, I'll talk a little more about that later. Sway bars. I was running. I was running no front sway bar and the silver in the rear. And this was on a high traction indoor clay track. So. Uh, I did not run front sway bars. Um, you could run front sway bars if you got a lot of like high speed sweepers, but for smaller size tracks, I don't think you need it. I would start without it. Um, yeah, that's kind of how I was running it. So a bunch of stuff, blah, blah, blah. I talked about sway bars, uh, little spindles, things to note in the actual setup sheet, blah, blah, blah. Somebody was posting their setup. And so, yeah, next on to step number six, center differentials. So center differentials uh, are, you know, obviously a, a common tuning option for your slash four before I actually put a video about the difference between the slipper clutch and the center diff. And that's, it was kind of based on what I wrote down here. 
So you can watch that video or read this if you're really interested. But yeah, pretty much run the center diff. For bashing, you'll run, want to run a slipper clutch. But for racing, you definitely want to run a center diff. Um, 100K is what I was doing, and I talked about why run the center diff, etc. Moving on to the next page. So I talk a little bit about what the tuning of the center diff does, um, how it affects the four wheel drive, why you want to lower it, etc. Then I talk about front and rear uh, diffs. So again, kind of like the center diff video I put together, the front and rear diffs do different things. Obviously the outside wheels have to spin faster around a corner to, than the inside wheel because they're traveling a longer distance. We go around a corner, the outside wheels have to go further than the inside wheel, so that's what a differential does. Um, 20K, 10K is what I ran. You could play with that. Maybe 15K, 10K, something like that. Um, and I kind of took a little break again, I think. Some people were asking me what else is next. So the next set of information is really uh, much more complicated. It's talking about um, once you have this base sit line set up, uh, how do you make smaller changes to get it, you know, specialized to your driving style, to your track? So I kind of talk about some theory, um, and really most of the tuning is about the corners. Um, there's stuff about jumping and landing and straightaways and stuff, but for the most part, the corners is actually where the biggest difference is going to be. And I kind of break it down into corner entry, mid corner, and corner exit. So. Um, yeah, I kind of talk about some just general theory about understeer, oversteer, traction, rolling, etc. So take a look at this if you want to understand a little bit more. Um, let me talk about uh, traction and weight transfer. So the vehicle obviously requires traction to go around a corner. And uh, what affects that, the biggest thing that will affect that is actually weight and weight transfer. You know, tire setup, etc. is going to be a big deal. But actually traction is what you're going to be tuning for the most and um, if you're on high traction surfaces you, you may have some traction rolling pro problems but for the most part you want to be increasing traction uh, to the point where to the end of the vehicle that requires it or needs it more so that your vehicle is balanced uh, if you're sliding out the front wheels and you're under steering you'll probably want to try to get more traction on the front end if your rear end is sliding out at the end of the front straight or maybe on power you'll want to do some things to try to increase rear traction uh, but you know the the goal here is to make the whole vehicle balanced at all for at all times so the car is also dynamic right it's not just sitting there on the track not moving uh, weight is being transferred front and rear left to right as you're going through the corners um, and so that's kind of what I'm explaining here uh, about traction weight transfer so go ahead and read that I, I definitely recommend going through that it, it is not super simple um, but I hopefully I explained it in a way that is more easy to understand um, then I talk about contact patch camber so as the vehicle is rolling as it's transferring weight front and back left to right um, the contact patch is changing and so actually that's what the camber links do a lot of people don't understand what the camber links are for. Those are little uh, links on the top uh, of your A-arms uh, front and back. Um, and you can set camber link angle, you can adjust the length, you can uh, lower it or raise it on the front, the rear, the inside, the outside. And so I kind of explained what camber links actually do here. Hopefully that made sense. Um, and then finally, you know, after all that theory, um, I kind of talk about, okay, now that you kind of understand this hopefully how do you apply it um, so anyways number 11 theory how to apply it and then I really kind of dive into okay we got some theory now now on corner entry maybe your vehicle is not driving the way you would like it to drive so what can you do to improve that so I talk about kind of the main adjustments that are available on a track slash 4x4 front shocks you can stiffen them lighten them change the oils adjust the positions inside outside um, I actually have a video about track uh, shock positions I'll put a link um, in in here in the video um, rear droop actually has a big effect on the vehicle so as your vehicle is braking weight is transferring the front the rear end will actually lift uh, the rear droop actually will control how much it can lift so the less rear droop which is how far the rear shocks can extend um, the less weight transfer you'll have to the front and it'll, it'll actually make the vehicle a little more stable if you're not getting enough weight transfer to the front you need more front entry 
corner entry steering, you might want more rear droop. Um, I'll talk about electronics a little bit, how you can affect uh, the corner entry using your electronics, drag brake, etc. There's other things that other vehicles have, such as kick up, caster, anti squat, etc. But um, the truck slash 404 does not have this, so I don't really get into it. Um, but just realize that there are more tuning options on other vehicles, like a uh, Techno, for example. No little break. People are pointing, posting up stuff. Don't really need to go into this too much. Um, talk about diffs for a little bit. I guess somebody was having problems with diffs. Uh, let's see. People posting pictures of their car. A lot of people like the setup, so it was good to see that it was working. Um, this guy talks about how to get more droop. Um, it's hard to get too much more droop on this because you're kind of limited by the space under the shock. But anyways, that's a discussion for another time. So number 13, mid corner. So this is the big one, right? Body roll, camber links, anti-roll bars. These all affect mid corner uh, weight transfer. Um, weight transfer is kind of a topic within itself. Uh, you need some weight transfer to generate enough grip, especially on the outside wheels. Uh, but uh, roll and how much weight transfer you want will depend a lot about how much traction you already have. You can increase weight transfer to get a little more traction up to a point, and then at some point it will actually start uh, traction rolling and flipping. Uh, but if you don't have enough weight transfer, you won't get enough uh, steering. You won't uh, your your vehicle just won't go around the corner that well. Will tend to understeer. Um, but if you have too much body roll, that's also can be a bad thing. If you have a lot of traction, you actually don't need as much body roll. The bad thing with body roll is that as it's rolling, your vehicle is not really going around the corner, it's just rolling. So, uh, you know, I talk a lot about finding kind of that sweet spot in the roll. That's a lot of what tuning ends up being, getting the roll right, getting the amount of roll right, getting the, uh, I don't know, the, the roll curve correct. You know, you'll see like roll center adjustments and stuff. Anyways, uh, read this for more information. I kind of go through the basics. So camber links, uh, that will affect roll. That's the, the main primary adjustments of camber links. Um, they'll do other things as well, but uh, camber links are really uh, the main adjustment on the slash. You can affect it with springs and shocks and stuff like that, um, but camber links is the main adjustment. Also anti-roll bars, talk about those, why you want to use anti-roll bars. A lot of people think, oh, I have anti-roll bars, I just want to put them on everything, and that's not necessarily true. For sure, the uh, short course platform benefits the most from anti-roll bars because short course trucks are very top heavy. Uh, they're just heavy in general and kind of tall, so there tends to be a lot of roll, and some anti-roll bars generally does help. So you can take a look at that, and... Um, People are doing more adjustments. It's working well for them, great. And finally, corner exit. So I talk about common problems in, in corner exit. It'll generally, you know, maybe understeer, oversteer, wheelie, etc. How to make adjustments to improve that. Uh, you know, using front droop to affect that. Uh, camera links to affect that. Uh, adjusting your, your contact patch, so I'd recommend reading through all this. Wheeling can be a problem if you have a lot of power. Uh, that's really controlled by your center diff primarily. So you can affect how much wheeling you get. Generally you don't really want a wheelie. It looks cool, but uh, if your car's going up, it's not really going forward. So I think the last uh, little bit is on jumping and landing. And I talk about shocks, pistons, uh, droop, a common problem. So nose diving is a super common problem within race vehicles. And the most common reason for this um, is that the tail or the rear end of the vehicle actually slaps on the face of the jump. So if your jump is super steep or you don't have enough ride height, uh, the rear end will slap off the face of the jump and then kick it up, kind of donkey kick it forward, and then causes your uh, truck to nose dive. So other things will be like uh, weight balance within the vehicle. Most 4x4s actually tend to nose dive a little bit. So um, you, you can't always get rid of it completely, but there are some things you can do to improve it. So last thing, aerodynamics. You definitely want to cut body. And uh, I think that was pretty much it. Yeah, so there you go. That is like a full on tuning guide for your Traxxas Slash 4x4. I'll put a link to this whole thread, read it. 
Uh, if you have questions, post them down below. If you have comments, things you don't understand, um, maybe some tips to get more out of your slash 404 or things that you found to have success. I hope you enjoyed this video. Please like, share, subscribe, hit the notifications button. Look for more videos soon, and thanks for watching.